Hi all, Mass Bankup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today I'm here with a rather smashed up welding machine. This is a Megatronic Pilot 1800, which is a combined stick welding machine and TIG welding machine. Now stick welding machine is using these shielded metal arc welding rods, which has a flux layer on the outside of the stick and you have the metal inside. Whereas TIG welding is tungsten arc welding and you have an electrode where you basically just melt and you have to deposit the metal into the weld by your other hand. So this is a combined unit and as you can see it has been run over by the crane at the scrapyard unfortunately so completely smashed up. It seems that the most important things are here the controls, power supply, inverter, output transformers. So yeah there's enough to learn about this combined TIG and stick welding machine. All right, let's do a quick rundown of this unit. Now on the back, we see we have the marking plate here. It's a three-phased input, nine amps, input power switch, gas input, does not have the cooling option and does not have a remote control. Fan output. Let's go to the front of the unit. Here we have the plus and minus connector for the welding cables for the stick. Uh, missing the control, missing the gas output, so that's all been removed. Oh, some nice burn damage here. We'll get a look at that later. So the three-phased input power goes to this three-phased filter. Just has these absolutely ridiculous uh, VEMA capacitors, which are no good. If you ever see these um, see-through silver-like capacitors in an input filter in an old unit, change them right away. These will burn and explode when, so once they get some age. We have a common mode noise choke, some more filtering capacitors. From here on the um, wires go up through the switch on the back side and then goes on over to the main board here. Mm, it's a little hard to see how the three-phased connection... Ah, that's the three blue ones. That's the three-phased connection once it's filtered. These wires over here goes to the three-phased rectifier sitting at the side. Have a small bridge rectifier sitting here. From here on we have a mains contactor. We have a housekeeping power supply. Sits with a small single 15 volt regulator. We have the DC bolt capacitance which goes off to the inverter through the red and black wires here. We have the control circuit. We have the gas for the TIG welding mechanism with a solenoid and valve sitting over here. Once we move on to the inverter part, we can just follow the red and black wires going down here. And we can see it feeds down into a two-part inverter split down the middle. We have the outputs here. So uh, could likely be a full bridge or maybe half bridge according to, let's see if it's paralleled. Mm, not really. Could actually seem like it's a full bridge design. Then the output from this uh, inverter, which is the high frequency inverter, goes to the high frequency step up transformer. We have the ignition a high voltage transformer sitting here, has its small driver here for arc ignition or arc striking, which we can see is just a small driving circuit driving a larger SCR and a larger SCR and yeah, has a single winding over to the transformer here. The outputs of all these output transformers goes to the other side. Some of it goes through an output choke. But else we just have the outputs going through a diode for rectification to DC. And then we have a high frequency DC waveform output from this wire and also from the other side, this collection of banded copper bar down here. So that was just a very quick one rundown of how it works. Now let's get it taken apart.
So that kind of uh, fell apart all over the place. Uh, let's uh, take the same walkthrough of the components that we had before when the unit was complete. But now uh, let's just zoom in on the single pieces. So let's make a little room. Let's start out with the input filter. So we had the three-phased input. We have some uh, common mode choke, L and C capacitance, uh, probably X and Y capacitors. So some are sitting to uh, ground and some are sitting between phases for noise filtering. From here on on, it went on to a bridge rectifier, which we have here. Marked 36 MT140, so that's 36 amps at 1,400 volts. Nice uh, three-phased uh, bridge rectifier, so that's a good part. Away with that. Now the uh, input section um, has one of these uh, odd uh, contactors, which is uh, meant for just a DIN rail mounting in a uh, electrical cabinet enclosure. But uh, you can apparently get these with these solder-on uh, terminals uh, or pins. So, and then it still have a uh, <laughs> this wire holder there. Hmm. Seems a little uh, weird. Maybe just uh, to uh, fasten it uh, doing uh, soldering, but. Uh, Seems unlikely as well in that position. Kind of a weird, uh, weird choice of uh, installation there. The DC bolt capacitance, 400 volt DC capacitors, 680 microfarads. Kendall capacitors. Well, at, at least it's marked for uh, 105 degrees Celsius, but uh, not a brand name I'm aware of. Um, seems to be from uh, 2014, week 41. That's the most uh, apparent date on this thing. I think I actually saw some test markings on some of these. Hmm. Well, no markings on the transformer here, so maybe on the back side, but at least it's able to check out what the main connections are here. And then, of course, seems to have only two outputs. So could be it's just an isolation transformer, actually, as it goes into this contactor. The control circuit, ah, here we have it. Date, 7th of August 2000. So this is the control board. Uses uh, copper heat sinks, has a small, uh, what seems to be controller EEPROM board. But other than that, it's just regular TLL logic, 40 and uh, 40 series LCs and some uh, LM3324 comparators or up amps, and it's just a general uh, a analog layout. Maybe we just up here have a single pro programmable IC. So the markings here, we have a AC supply, AC power, fan supply, valve, high frequency, AC and water control, Tick torch, and that's about it. No markings on these connectors here, which goes between the other boards. Now um, we have some small budget up thing here. 24 volt AC goes through a C574 transistor and goes over here to the plus 15 volt connection. Oh, that's interesting. But uh, could actually be that um, seems it's so uh -huh. seems like it's using the plus 15 volt to uh, bridge that out into ah, okay we do have resistor there. Wow that's small. Instead of the R9. So it's actually uh, driving something to the RHF supply with a transistor butt in there. Very clever solution, very ugly as well. And not much on the back side, just normal double-sided routing. 
We have a ground plane here at the front. So then we get to the inverter. Also has a test marking, 2003. So that's actually uh, three years between uh, parts so far. So it's just a huge stock of things. We have the DC bus input and we have the output of the inverter here. And that's just the thing with uh, welding stuff and stuff that comes in in workshops gets very dirty. So it is, of course, coated in order to not uh, short circuit from metal dust. But it uh, seems that this is really a multi-purpose PCB because we only have a single switch sitting on each side. So this is just a half bridge driver. Maybe it can be configured to be full bridge, but this one certainly isn't. Let's see, what do we have here? So much dirt. GP20, GP120. So most likely something like a 20 amp, 1200 volt IGPT or MOSFET. And then we have a lot of diodes sitting in the middle here. Simply, uh, it's been doused in this uh, varnish, so it's actually impossible to read out what kind of uh, diode it is. Just sits on this nice heavy-duty heatsink, which is actually like dual dual panel. You can see it's uh, two panels pressed together. But this belongs to the bottom here, and to the other two belongs to the base plate. And then it's just press fitted together. Isolated between the parts here. Ah, okay. So that's of course also a giveaway on why we do not see any sill pads be below the transistors. That the two heat sinks are. It was actually also mounted in a plastic holder inside the cabinet in order to not short circuit or yeah, give falls to ground. It says Pilot 1800 as we had on the back of the unit. So uh, the inverter suits that. But on the output um, diode rectifier, we have the same type of heatsink, just a uh, complete, not a, a split one. But here it actually says uh, Pilot 1600. So it is, uh, it is a kind of mix-up of uh, different parts from uh, different versions of this welder. Now, uh, when I took the, um, the transformers out, well, the screws holding the transformers was actually also holding the transformers together. Maybe except the, um, the main output transformer here. Oh, no, oh, that's the HF transformer. Oh, it's the AFF. Oh, that's the output transformer, this one. Connects to the uh, terminal. Nice uh, chunky part. Not much information on it. We have the uh, output choke. Something like uh, 30 square millimeters of uh, cover. And then we have, of course, the coupling transformer sitting here. Most likely a one to one going through directly to the um, diode bridge here. Which, let's see, what does that say? It's a HFA 320 NJ40. So just a rough guess, something like 320, 320 amps at 400 volt, or maybe the other way around, maybe it's a high voltage diode. We will see on the data sheet. Now on the back side of this, we have some kind of discharge circuit here goes to a power resistor ah, which is actually broken so that was what okay so the power resistor is busted and see one of these golden aluminum housed resistors is just a wire around a ceramic rod now one interesting thing that was burned on this oh we have some more interesting things here a uh, shunt current 
measuring measuring shunt. Measure the uh, voltage drop across this piece of uh, metal in order to yeah give a feedback on the current consumption. Turn down the driver. And you can see what, what I meant by the uh, construction holding together the transformers, that it's simply just falling apart. But uh, that's actually pretty nice. Normally these are glued together, impossible to uh, get apart without breaking it. Now on the output, there was some kind of uh, sensing circuit here. And I'm not quite sure what it is, except maybe some kind of ground fault detection. But it certainly did detect something, a ground fault circuit. It could be that this is a sacrificial circuit, that uh, in order to protect the unit, this will create a fault to ground before the inverter dies. But it is certainly burnt down. High frequency arc starter circuit. Uh, Pretty simple, standalone, has a uh, supply with the triggering mechanism as well. Just controlled by a single HF4093, and maybe that's a driver IC. But you can see some uh, isolation transformers, some capacitance, logic, drives a single SCR, or transistor over here to drive a larger SCR to trigger a single wound um, coil around the output transformer and that is just to kick a, give a high voltage kick to start the arc and then it will shut down again. And then it goes down to something like uh, welding at 70 volt DC. So what do we have left here? Maybe the uh, output terminals, some uh, nice uh, brass fittings. So if I could get some uh, old uh, welding uh, cables, could of course uh, save these in order to uh, use it as high current connectors, as it really is high current connectors already. So yeah, also a couple of nice parts. So I hope you enjoyed this teardown of the Megatronic Pilot 1800 welding inverter slash tick welder. So until next time, see ya.